he planned to have office hours with your professor at noon, shoot him in the neck with your alpha blaster, saw open his head, all the rise of brainstones together, go to the test wearing a trench coat and top hats nobody notices, pass the exam, return to your office, soak the professor's body in nitric acid, then shoot the random chunks in his face. Oddly, this is exactly what a fortune teller told you would happen two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you head to the professor's office. Inside, the student who spent the entire year referring to the period between consecutive Tuesdays as the weekend is complaining to his professor about the exam covering too much material. You enter and shoot him in the face. His head explodes in an abusive fashion. The professor chortles about finally getting some use out of his brain and wipes blood and bone fragments out of his beard. After the, after the two of you laugh for a half hour, you turn silent. You know why I'm here, he said. The professor begins to sweat and fidget nervously. Practically tearful with fear, he weakly mutters, you want me to be on your committee, don't you? <laughs> I want you to die. The professor exhales and relief. <laughs> he takes out his beta ray and aims it at you. You have an animated discussion about the tedious differences between the alpha and beta version, about whether the beta ray was overhyped, and about whether it was smart for Apple to get into the weapons business. <laughs> <laughs> then you begin your game of death. Uh, so, presumably you win. Now go to 17. Probably just control with this one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Having heard of your professor, you decide to eat his brain. <laughs> According to the laws of nature, you gain all of his powers. <laughs> as he was an engineer, this includes the ability to go without bathing for as long as he did. Uh, speech pattern marked by bursts of rapid conversation, followed by awkward silence, all interspersed with ugly chirping laughter, <laughs> and a deep hatred for anyone either below or above your level of intelligence. <laughs> Amidst the many small facts you take from the professor's brain, one brain, one of you that stands out, something called booleans. This is a plot point that won't come up in this act. But <laughs> According to modern science, the fundamental particle of reality is the boolean. All booleans are either yes booleans or no booleans, and most people have them in equal quantity. An individual's ability to manipulate the energy derives directly from having a higher than average percentage of yes booleans. The great settlers, many important figures of history, and perhaps even the ancient gods, owe their fame to random particle imbalance. You decide to keep this stolen thought and discard less useful ones like uh, the time the professor's third child was born or the fact that his anniversary was today. <laughs> you would think murdering a professor would pose a moral issue for you, but ethics is a little hard to simulate on computers uh, for your department to care about. Plus, engineers tend to focus on things that can either fly, explode, or flex flow. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the head silence insists ethics is real, even if you can't build a spaceship out of it. Uh, at least that's the impression you get as they arrest you. Uh, if you wish to hire a lawyer, go to 25. If you wish to represent yourself, go to 26. 26! <laughs> right. <laughs> Raises his gavel to pronounce you guilty. 
When a strange, handsome man appears at the back of the court, facing away from everyone, this is the confused tuxedo man, although I don't know if he's wearing that here. He forcefully yet, his forceful yet alluring buttocks are so perfectly tanned, you rarely realize he's wearing ass little leather pants. <laughs> he narrows his eyes, pulls some legal notes out of the cleft of his majestic chin. <laughs> you recognize from pictures this is the vice president of the United Vassals of the Empire. In just a moment, he rumbles in his rich, panther like baritone. <laughs> Vp approaches the front of the room, and in a sound reminiscent of the grunt the prize bull makes on claiming two mates at once, he clears his throat. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, I come here not just to exonerate this young man, but to play your emotions with shallow rhetoric. Uh, people sit up and take notice. The Vp consults his list of cheer inducing topics uh, to touch on, dying loved ones, patriotic duty, reminiscing about the passage into adulthood, and the quiet dignity of life will live. Despite the fact that the speech has nothing to do with you, uh, and that on 12 separate occasions, the VP stops to show his biceps to female or gay or open-minded members of the jury, <laughs> by the end, everyone is begging to recast their votes and declare you innocent. The moment you are acquitted, the VP grabs you by the scruff of your neck and drags you out of the room. You start to thank him, but his mansive scowl indicates that you should shut up for a second, you worthless clone. He looks left and right and gives you a strange chip. You may need this for your exam. Name VP chip. Just once, you can use it to go back to the last page where you made the decision. Time for the final exam. 48. You enter the exam. As this exam is graded on a curve, everyone in the room is your enemy. <laughs> and they are powerful enemies indeed. No, not the attractive, muscular students in the middle of the room. They're weak. No, as you walk, you know who you fear. In the, in the back, the four foot tall girl adjusts her spectacles as she grins at you, making an aggression display of her orthodontia. <laughs> Which glistens in the artificial light. In the front, the boy with the sweater vest stretches out his 85 pounds of academic brawn, flicking his mechanical pencil to the tune of Rite of the Valkyries. <laughs> in the corner, a wildly overweight redhead with an intimidatingly dense constellation of acne blows his nose on a pink monogram pinky, then reaches, uh, releases his calculator from a Star Trek themed bandolier. Your lower lip quivers blissfully as you take a seat. The first part of the exam is multiple choice. The test design is more on step child. Uh, so I'm assuming you win that. I think the rest of this is test. Uh, this is just you have to solve a, a, a bloody puzzle. Then you go 51. Hopefully you got the answer right. You want to have gotten it right or wrong, right? Correct. You guys like right, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, well played, Dorkulon. <laughs> it's not me saying that. That's what Peter says. You get your answer right. However, there is a surprise part of the test that you must pass before you become an engineer. A physical test. Every atom in your body revolts at this notion. You became an engineer because you like working with your hands and dislike working with your arms. Happily, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the physical exam involves no exercise. You perk up. You may have a shot at this after all. As is well known, the graph weights of a group of prominent engineers follows an inverted bell curve. Inverted, I mean, right? Okay. <laughs> You have one week to get to one end of the other, uh, so the battle is weight alteration. Uh, 55, choose one of the following, get skinny or get fed. Um, you can, doesn't affect anything. You pass your exam, making you a bona fide engineer. Because you are an engineer and thus functionally illiterate, you have to look up bona fide. The definition pleases you. <laughs> you did it, Dorkula. That's not a computer saying that, that's me. I'm good at 57. Uh, so this is the last scene of the act. Students' graduation day. Based on your outstanding performance in an institution that neither values nor encourages anything of quality, you're teleported to the chamber of the president and vice president of the United Vassals of the Empire for a special consul consultation. They're impressed by your ability to meet every challenge, whether you're dumb one or staggering dumb one. Both seem to look you over greedily, like you're a delicious stick. The president whispers, we must be certain to the VP. The VP nods thoughtfully at you and walks over. His ursine palm grips your puny shoulder as he towers over you. Shooting chin of monument of handsomeness. <laughs> you will be needed on the front lines of the war. Fortunately, your urge to vomit stifles your automatic attempt to squeal like a small child. Based on your achievements at the monastery, we believe you are destined for great things, but you must prove your mettle to the man forge of combat. If you do not already have one, add basic class mastery. 